Welcome everybody to the music show. I'm Ray Brazelton, your host. And I'm Nick Reed, a co-host. And here we are again. We've got a fantastic show, a mm -hmm. show uh, of a guitar club, a local guitar club. The Rochester Guitar Club. Rochester, right. Okay. right. We have various people playing. In fact, yeah. uh, on the time that we shot this, there were so many that mm -hmm. we're going to split this up into two programs. We're going to have uh, tonight, we're going to have one, or today, whenever you're watching, and uh, we're going to have another one uh, uh, for the next show. So, well, we'd be. I think you'll enjoy the different styles uh, of playing that there are. The like Rochester Guitar Club prides itself in being a, a accepting of everybody. Uh, you know, you don't have to be necessarily a professional to be in the mm -hmm. club. In fact, most of us, most of them aren't. Yeah, most most of the ones who played aren't uh, professional. But on the other hand, you get some real nice, yeah. oh, beautiful oh. stuff there. You got melody chords. Mm -hmm. You got. Uh, uh, give us yeah. a few few examples of some of the. We've got uh, melody chords. <laughs> <laughs> we got melody Actually, chords. Actually, <laughs> you have a little list there of some of the people who are playing tonight. Yeah, uh, one uh, person uh, will be uh, starting the show tonight will be uh, Jerry Carter. Right. And then uh, Chuck Dye, who plays right. uh, a seven string guitar and plays uh, more of a, what do you call his style? That's chord melody. Yeah, that's right, what I thought. Yeah, on a seven string. He's and uh, nice. Jerry Carter, the first one. That Jerry Carter, mentioned. acoustic finger style. Yeah. Yeah. Then you have Paul and Nick. Who's that? Who's that? I don't oh, know. Oh, that's you. Yeah. You're going to be playing it's with me, your, your friend Paul. My old friend Paul from Paul. many yeah. years what, ago. What's the right. last name? Schickling. Paul right. Schickling. And then, uh, of course, so have our own John Williamson also. Yeah. You better believe it. He's the guy that keeps us going here. And uh, Our audio technician. We're going to finish up with Deborah Ross. Right. And uh, then, uh, you know, we'll yeah. probably, you know, you'll see the round table and right. see all the other Uncle segments. Next Corner, every, every all the other segments. And we'll so also be continuing uh, the round table on the following right. ep uh, episode so, of the show. So this is two nights you're going to have to commit, and you had better commit <laughs> or else you'll miss some very good guitar playing. Well, you just stay tuned now, okay? Yes. Enjoy this show. Hello, everybody. I'm Ray Brazelton, your host, and uh, I'm going to be introducing to you Jerry Carter, right? Jeremy Carter, actually. Jeremy, where, where are you from, Jeremy? I live in Greece, just since 74, so you, know, you never know when you might move again. <laughs> so you're from upstate New York. I'm <laughs> uh, actually born in the city, in New York City. New York City, yeah. Well, I just uh, really looking forward to seeing, hearing your selection, your song that you're going to be doing today. What kind of songs uh, do you usually play? I play solely by ear. I never had a lesson. Been banging away at this for 49 years. Uh, so I, whatever I hear that I want to play, that's what I play. Uh, so you do different styles? Or? I do different styles. I do different genres of music. I do do whatever the heck I feel like playing. and uh, Turns out pretty good. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> that's up to the listener to decide. Uh, it's just, uh, uh, there's, there's no way to quanti quantify it as being a single genre. It's, uh, and and there's, uh, you know, I have to stylize it because I can't read somebody else's style. I'm illiterate. Well, <laughs> I doubt that, but but we're uh, we, we're going to be surprised, then, I guess. Just uh, wanted to check and uh, make sure you didn't have a couple. Uh, you know, who, who are your inspirations in music? Uh, I would say I'm uh, quite significantly influenced by Chet Atkins mm. and uh, maybe a little Harvey Reed on the more recent uh, genres of music. Uh, but uh, th there's this a thousand other people because I come from the '60s. I'm a folk player. Yeah. From then. You do a little bit of finger style. Oh, I'm I'm purely finger style. Actually, I always have been, which is unusual, because most people kind of start with a flat pick if yeah. they're self-taught. Right. Uh, whereas I, I was always with the fingers. So, and I don't know why. I can't explain it. Well, we'll look forward to it, Jerry. Uh, I guess uh, I'd like you to introduce your song, and then I'll get out of your way, and uh, we'll let you start. Thank you very much. What is your first song? Start off with uh, "Summertime." Uh, of course, my stylized version of it. So. And uh, we'll Here take we it from there. I'll introduce the second one. Yep. And come along. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Jerry. Talk to you a bit.
And just to show a little range, a little di different style, this is a uh, Patrick's, uh, no, a Jonathan Edwards tune by name Shanty. And uh, I, I, as with most of the stuff that I do, uh, I usually sang. <laughs> And so, I, you know, they, they don't quite come across the same as I would normally do in a, an open mic situation, let's say, but uh, it's a pretty nice song for an instrumental. Well, again, we have another Rochester Guitar Club member here that's going to be playing for you. Uh, this is Chuck Dye. I got that right? Yes, you do, Ray. Thanks. Good. Uh, just wanted to uh, mention that uh, this is a, more of a jazz player from what I've heard uh, so far, and I believe you'll enjoy him very much. Uh, let's see, you've been involved with the Rochester Club for, uh, Rochester Guitar Club for a while? A couple of years, I guess, mm -hmm. two, I think, maybe. Found a good group. There's a, a lot of uh, different type of styles, but do they have very many people that play like you do the jazz? A couple of jazz people show up uh, from time to time. Uh, I seem to be the most frequent. Frequent. No, that's good. You enjoy it that much. You come out quite often. How often does it meet the club? Well, it's meeting twice a month now. Uh, it's been once a month. I don't get there as often as I'd like. But well, I can understand. It's a busy, probably a busy man with all the. Do you? Do you? play out once in a while or do you just you do yeah, once in a while any particular places that you play out or get to put a plug in for the uh, Flint Creek Brewing Company in Phelps hmm. oh, I'd... nice folks good music come out <laughs> well it's it's great to know that the guitar club has people out there playing uh, for other people and uh, spreading this all around but we're spreading it around here in this show and uh, just um, maybe a couple of questions uh, I could ask uh, did you study with anybody in particular or did they pick this up more on your own I've had a whole bunch of teachers over the years, mm -hmm. but uh, for jazz, I did what a lot of Rochester players do and uh, managed to weasel my way into a couple of summers studying with Gene Bertoncini when he comes up from New York City. Yeah. You learn a lot from those uh, type of seminars or whatever. It's very scary stuff. <laughs> I'll bet. <laughs> well, I, I guess, um, you, how long have you been playing anyhow? I actually started playing a mandolin when I was about five, my grandmother's, which I still have. and. Uh, then uh, I wanted to play a guitar when the Beatles showed up on the Ed Sullivan show. That was yeah. 1964. Yeah. I remember that, that year. I remember being there on the TV watching it, too. Right. Well, I, I guess we ought to let you go. You want to tell us the name of your uh, first song? Sure. This is a Henry Mancini composition called Two for the Road. And I s steal this more or less note for note from a uh, Bucky Pizzarelli recording. OK. Go for it. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
again, uh, I, I noticed, I, I thank you very much, I, I did notice that there was a sweet sound coming out of this guitar that I didn't realize when I first introduced you, introduced you. And I don't know if you noticed, but there's uh, like an extra bass sound to it. This is a seven string guitar? Yes. Is there any name for a seven string guitar? Just seven string guitar? Seven string guitar. Okay. Well, I just wanted to make mention to it so everybody uh, realizes. And we may be uh, talking about this uh, more. Would you uh, tell us more about this later? Sure, I can tell you some, some, a whole bunch about the history of a seven string guitar, actually. Okay, look forward to it. Okay, you can care what's the name of your next song. This is a, uh, a George Van Epps arrangement. He's the inventor of the seven string guitar. Uh, and this is a song called Last Night When We Were Young. Thank you. Here we are again. We have a special treat for you today. We actually have Uncle Nick with us, playing with us today, which is something I've been trying to get him to do for quite a while. We've yeah, only got you. you. Know, yeah, a little cash goes a long way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to introduce uh, his friend here uh, from the Rochester Guitar Club. Mm -hmm. And you want to give me your name? And My name is Paul Schickling, okay. and I'm, I'm from Rochester originally. Okay. And I've been with the Guitar Club for about two years now. Two years, and uh, how about you? Have you gotten actually involved where you're a member now? I'm actually a, a member, yeah, oh, okay. so a card-carrying member. Yeah, yes. I guess it's probably my turn now. <laughs> well, I know, I'm so excited about it. I've been hearing, Nick told me that you were going to be playing with him, and and I know that you and Nick have go back a ways. Uh, can you give me a little history? I, I think I trust you more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, back when Nick had a guitar shop up on Clifford Avenue, um, I used to stop by there and we started playing guitar together and that was probably 30 years ago or more. Yeah, it's been like uh, 86 was the last year that we actually did business, so. That you and I, or? Well, at the string shop. <laughs> and then, um, wow, it's been 35 years maybe. How old are you? <laughs> not <talking. laughs> He's not going to say that well, one. Before we forget. Well, before you forget. Hi, Gene. <laughs> Hi, Gene. <laughs> There's got to be something to this. Is it, oh, it's you. Gotcha. Yeah. Hi, Gene. So, uh, Nick, 
Paul is classically cha trained. and uh, I studied with Kinlaw back uh, about 35 years ago. You were a little boy. I was, I was a, you know, <laughs> pimp squeak. <Youngster. laughs> right. Well, that uh, must mean for some good, uh, you guys have kind of a, a jazz type sound to me, but what, who am I, you know? Yeah, well, that's what we got. We're uh, playing jazz tunes out of the, the fake book, mm -hmm. and um, that's what Nick gravitates towards. And yeah. Yeah. so if I'm going to play guitar with Nick, that's what I got to go. Yeah, well, I know all about it. I listen to him every day. Yeah. What, don't you teach at some studio somewhere? <laughs> Hmm, talk about loaded questions. I hope this one doesn't blow up. It's so loaded. <laughs> yes, I, I teach up at Ray, Blas Bla ew, Ray Brasselton's in uh, Marion. Yes, I don't know. I've never heard of the guy. I think it's in Marion. Yeah. That's where I go. Anyway, it's, it's <laughs> so you're a teacher here, uh, and you've been teaching for a couple of years. Uh, Actually, you've been teaching for me for six years. years. I think with six. me, it's six, yeah. Time and then flies. you've been teaching before that for yeah, years. Yeah, 30 years. years or so, yeah. 40 years. Yeah. And you had your own shop. Yeah, I started when I was five, so, yeah, that'll be about 40 years. Yeah. I don't think so. But in any case, we're real glad to have both of you on. I'm really looking forward to this. What is the name of your first song? Paul, you say it. It's called Satin Doll. Satin Doll. Ah, Satin Doll. Yeah, okay. Typical standard. Okay, great. All right. to uh, try another song? Uh, yeah. Dare we? <laughs> <laughs> if I can keep track of where we're going. This is a, uh, a bossa, bossa nova, black orpheus. It's one of the uh, standards of the industry, but this uh, is one of the ones that has been uh, tagged as the theme song uh, because it's, it's, it's uh, such a nice song. Louis Bonfi, he wrote that. Uh, now, in, in a bossa, who's the other one, Paul? Joe Bean. Joe Bean. Joe Bean. Joe Bean. Right. Him and Bonfa are like, uh, they're the epitomes. Bossa Nova. Yeah. Okay, a Bossa Nova song.
Uncle Nick's Corner, you caught me playing again. Uh, and I can't overemphasize the, uh, the necessity to get your fingers on the guitar every day and do a little bit of practicing. That little thing I was playing there, we uh, in the uh, workshop I do, we have some people uh, get together and all we do is we talk about guitar and we play guitar. And that's a little E minor thing that we started working on. And I thought the chord progression was uh, interesting enough to share with you. Uh, it's, I, we really don't have a name for it. We call it the E minor thing because it's an E minor. And actually, I think we developed it. Uh, we started working on the old Stairway to Heaven thing. And with that movable, uh, we, uh, we started to develop this one. And, and instead of being with A minor, it's an E minor. And I'm starting out with the rhythm part of it. Now the rhythm part of it, I, uh, you can play rhythmically, strumming, strumming like this, or it can be finger picked. By the way, when I finger pick, I really like doing that because I can pick out different notes and emphasize different notes with whatever fingers I'm using. You could do it with a pick too, but for me it's so much easier with my fingers. Uh, for instance, that, that chromatic line where I'm starting with the root of the e minor, e minor chord. And then I'm going to the E flat. And then I'm going to a D. Then the next note is a C sharp. As I'm playing, listen to it. that was doing was accentuating it with the number of fingers that I was using. But to get back to that, we have just a plain E minor, just a normal E minor that we're working with. Uh, after that, we're going to an E minor, but we're going to have an E flat with it. Now we can go through and technically name each one of these chords, but all I'm doing there is I'm dropping the E, which is on the third or second fret of the fourth string, I'm dropping that down to the first fret, and we're getting that. Now, one more time, we're going down chromatically to the D. When I play that D, the fourth string, and I have that chord left, it's an E minor 7. But then we're going to replace the E on the fourth string, but the chromatic note is going down to the C sharp. So it's... Flat, D making it the E minor 7, and then that C sharp making that, that chord right there. I'm, I'm coming up with a form that on the first finger I'm using uh, on the second fret of the fourth string, and the third finger I'm using on the fourth fret of the sixth string. Technically what that is is a minor third, and we use those all over this place. In fact, when I'm to that chord, the next chord I'm going is a variation on an A minor. And I'm taking that same form that I have on the second and fourth fret of the fourth and fifth string, and I'm moving it up to the fifth and seventh fret of the third and the fourth string. Here's what it sounds like, listen. If we were going to name that, we'd have to name that an A minor nine because we have the a minor we have an a here a c and we have an e that's your a minor chord but we're adding the open b now a lot of times we move chords around and we just move certain forms around and take parts of the chord and kind of suspend it above open strings and it gives us a real open sound a minor nine so let me get to that chord from the beginning. Now where the first chord progression where I was doing on E minor was actually lasting for two measures, I'm only going to play one measure on that. And, and when you have a chord like that, you can, with your fingers, do tons of things. There I'm simulating a pick with my finger. And then the next chord we get to is we're taking two notes out of a B chord 
and we're throwing that right in the center of the open strings again. Uh, technically, let me think, it would be a B13, B, D, B, D, F, G, A, B, B, D, M, D, F, A, right. B add 13, and we get that open sound. Now, going back to the beginning, if I was playing that without any fancy things to it, it would sound like this. And all that was a simp was a simple 1-4-5 in the key of a E minor. But adding this gives it a lot of movement. nice full sound and we'll do other things to it. On some later section session what I'll do is I'll bring that up and play that part which goes with that. Actually I was playing it a little bit too long. It should sound more like chords up on top that add so much to this uh, this sort of thing but until that time we'll uh, be seeing you again remember keep on playing keep on playing this you can never play too much by the way if, if you have any questions or anything you'd like covered actually if you would even like to have a, a visual uh, copy of, of what we're doing here almost every time I have some uh, chord charts or tablature or notes uh, that uh, portray the uh, the music that we're doing here. So anytime you'd like a, a copy of that, just get in touch with us. Uh, Mike is probably putting something on the bottom of the screen as we talk uh, as a point of contact. Uh, we'd be glad to hear from you. But uh, until that, until the next time, we'll uh, we'll see you. It's uh, very nice work, really nice. And it's Chuck Dye, right? Correct. Yes. Right. And you were one of our uh, participants in the show uh, here from the Rochester Guitar Club, and uh, we want to welcome you. Thanks. <laughs> and thank you very much for doing, and this is, the showcase segment of the show. And Chuck uh, is uh, going to tell us a little bit about this interesting guitar. Uh, first of all, it um, right off the bat, I don't know if you can see or not, but this is a seven string guitar which is highly unusual and uh, I think I'll let you just uh, tell us a little bit about the seven string guitar and then if I have some questions for you I'll sure. after you're done sure. you got a mic <laughs> go for it okay. uh, the seven string guitar was developed by a, uh, a guitarist named George Van Epps and he was both a, an educator a musician uh, and uh, uh, a fine musician and an inventor, uh, not as prolific perhaps as Les Paul, but nonetheless uh, had some very good inventions to his name. And he decided to mess around with a guitar and he was looking to play some solo work and felt the need for lower notes. Uh, so he had uh, the Epiphone company make him a seven string guitar prototype. He put a, uh, a bass string on the bottom and it's not tuned in fourths, it could be, but his desire was to be able to play uh, alternating bass lines uh, along with uh, chords and melody on the top. Uh, a challenge for anybody and certainly a challenge for me. But the point is, is that if you play an open voiced, this happens to be an E flat major seven chord. Uh, if you happen to do on a six string, you can get a B flat, which is the fifth on the bottom, and that's it. Uh, by adding a lower bass string tuned a fifth below, an octave below the fifth string, you can put that note on without going anywhere. You don't have to reach for it. You don't, all you have to do is be able to stretch a little bit further on a wider neck. So that allowed him to do those kinds of lovely things that he could do uh, to accompany singers, 
uh, or, or just to play solo work. Uh, he was not a very prolific uh, recording artist, but uh, most of his recordings are still in print and available on, really online. You won't find him in shops. Well, the, then I take it it has been a while that this uh, seven string guitar has been around. Not many of them, but they've been around for a while. That's probably right. from uh, uh, late 1930s, I think, is when uh, when the prototype was made for him. And uh, it's been picked up by a few players uh, who have come after uh, George. Uh, Bucky Pizzarelli is uh, very well known and still recording. Uh, Howard uh, Alden uh, is playing uh, seven, has been playing seven strings. Uh, there, there are some other seven string players around. Uh, and it's finally becoming more popular. They're still a little hard to find, but um, uh, many of the major uh, Luthiers in the country are building seven strings on special order. Yeah, that, that's great because the sound is, uh, it just uh, adds so much body uh, to the chord mm -hmm. and uh, the mood is, is, is there mm -hmm. with this much, much more of that bass sound than mm -hmm. a lot of uh, mm -hmm. guitars played. But especially with the kind of music I think you play, it works real nice with the mm -hmm. bass, the mm -hmm. low bass. Um, that low string, what is that tuned at? That's tuned a uh, tuned to A, mm -hmm. uh, A natural, which is an octave below the fifth string. Below the fifth. So the right. the, the top six strings, if you will, are exactly the same. Uh, in in the Van Epps tuning, are exactly the same as a regular six string. You simply have an additional A, mm -hmm. uh, an octave below the fifth string. So uh, the point is, is that there still is not. There are not many people playing these seven strings, and I don't know why. I wonder sometimes. Uh, I don't is know. Is it harder either. to play? It's not that much harder. There is, is one little uh, technical point uh, which uh, can hang you up when you first get a seven string, which is if you think about this, guitar players can think along with me as I say this. If you think about the middle of a six string guitar neck is between the D and the G string, or the third and the fourth string. If whatever tuning you're in, the middle of the neck runs straight down between those two strings. You have two sets of three strings. In a seven string guitar, you have seven strings and you now have a string in the middle of the neck, which is not where you'd expect it to be. So if you start looking at your fingers and where they are, everything seems off, everything feels off, and it's very likely that you'll reach for notes and find that you're somewhere else uh, where you didn't intend to be. So, the, uh, uh, the internet provides us a clue. Other seven string players suggest playing with your eyes closed for a month or so and just play. And don't yeah. worry, please don't yeah. look at the strings and you'll discover that after a while, intuitively, you know where you are. Well, I imagine it's just like when you're first learning any uh, the guitar in general, you know, learning guitar, it's kind of the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you had me hold your guitar when we had some <laughs> technical difficulties, and I was trying it, and mm -hmm. I just couldn't, I couldn't get the hang of it. It was mm -hmm. very difficult. For, mm -hmm. But other than that, just getting through it, I would imagine it wouldn't be that hard once you learn. I, I just think it's beautiful. It's, uh, I'm, I'm so glad you brought this to our attention. Um, uh, these, especially more expensive, uh, is it, uh, imagine it adds to the cost. Uh, it generally yes it does simply because uh, you have a wider neck you have it basically you have a different neck you can't say, take a six string and modify it right. uh, there's no room for another tuner right. uh, you have a wider neck uh, in this case you, obviously you have an altered bridge and tail piece you have a you have a seven uh, pole pickup instead of a six pole pickup so about the only thing that really hangs together well is the body. Everything else mm -hmm. needs to be modified in order to... The, the neck concerned. isn't longer, though. It's the, the neck, same the as... Neck as the scale, has the, yeah, scale, scale length is the same. Is the same. Right. Uh, it's wider, though, to accommodate the additional mm -hmm. string. Right. And mm -hmm. um, you also have to be a little bit careful to, to get strings that are made for a seven-string guitar mm -hmm. because the length of the, of the, uh, the uh, D string is just that much longer, and you have to be able to get mm -hmm. all the way from down here all the way up there to string it. Okay. Now I see what you're, uh, that is, well, that's what I was wondering. Mm -hmm. it, so it is a little bit it, longer. It's, it's the, not the scale, but it's the yeah, head probably yeah, yeah. The, more the, than anything. The head is longer. Right, the scale right. length is the same. Exactly. Um, you know, I notice it says Eastman on it. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, we being from the Rochester area, Eastman is a pretty big name in music for us over here. But this has nothing to do with them. This has nothing to do with the Eastman School of Music, a mere coincidence. Um, mm -hmm. it, this is a... Uh, uh, 
a guitar company uh, located elsewhere in the United States, uh, right. although uh, both uh, Dave Stutzman uh, at, the, uh, yeah. at his shop and uh, John Bernenzio at his shop carry uh, yeah. uh, Eastman. Yeah, very uh, good. Eastman products. Well, I tell you, it, it's uh, interesting. I, I also enjoy that color. Did you say there was some kind of a name for that? Or? Uh, I think they call it their violin finish. It, uh, they, uh, the Eastman Company, did, does make violins and cellos, and uh, and uh, so I think it's the same uh, the same finish that they use on uh, on violins. Well, I want to thank you very much for joining Glad us. To. And I know uh, this uh, couldn't have asked for a better showcase. We've never had anything like this before. So again, thank you for being with us today. Thank you. And, My uh, pleasure. And everybody, stay tuned for the rest of the show. Well, we have for you now John Williamson. John, how you doing? Very well, thanks. Good. Uh, John, you've been involved with, I think, music for long as I can, uh, as long as I've been alive almost. I don't know. But you've been involved for quite a long time, haven't you? Long time, yep. But John, uh, you're also on the board of the Rochester Guitar Club, and uh, I was wondering how that's working out. Just fine. We have uh, fairly regular board meetings, and we do the planning for the club, the upcoming activities, the uh, concerts, and so forth. So uh, uh, we get a lot done behind the scenes, and then that enables the people that come to the meetings to have a good time. Yeah, you put on some good concerts with the people out here uh, too in the area. Absolutely, you, you do a lot of you do a lot of that too. Concerts. Yes. Yeah. Um, you also work with uh, other bands. I know that uh, John is actually primarily. Aren't you a bass player? Yes. And you play with quite a few bands in the area. Boy, every time I go to call you, you're with this band, another band, this town, this town. You're pretty regular. Well, I actually prefer doing fill-in work with different groups. It works out well, and it's a lot of fun to do it that way, too. Now, what is the name of the song you're going to be doing? Um, this song is called Slinky. It's a tune that Chet Atkins did a while ago. I'm doing an unplugged, unauthorized version. Unauthorized. <laughs> okay, John. Go for it. <clears throat> Everybody and welcome to the music show. My name's Ray Brazelton. And Ray, you're the host, right? So I'm the host. <laughs> I'm the co-host. <laughs> That's the co-host, right? But we're here with the music show, and we have with you the Rochester Guitar Club today. And I hope you have enjoyed the show. We've uh, had a real good time with all of you guys. Thanks a lot. 
Enjoyed it. It was our pleasure. We're going to talk with you for a while. Nick, what would you think of them? Keep them? Yeah. yeah. Pretty good. I, we Obviously really... It was uh, an interesting evening. Oh, very interesting. A yeah, big group. I think this is actually the biggest group we've had probably on this show as far as on the stage, anyhow. So we've got about uh, 10, 11 of us here, uh, right. 12 maybe. And I believe that, uh, you know, I'd like to, first of all, thank you, Kinlaw, for uh, all your help. You know, Kinlaw, <laughs> this uh, organization was part, pretty much started by you and I bl believe... Uh, and Richard Tagliari. Richard Tagliari, Tagli yeah. Right and, here. You know, and, uh, Is he here? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, so there's, there's a couple a, other guys who aren't here. And I know that uh, this, it, it kind of formed off, like, kind of a, a shoot off of the... Uh, Rochester uh, Guitar Society, Guitar Society right? Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, you could just uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how this came to be. It just did the Rochester Society kind of. Rochester Guitar Society was uh, formulated sometime in the 1980s, and yeah. it ran out of steam about 10 years yeah. later in the 1990s. Right. Um, we kind of held on to the name for a while. It was uh, registered with the Guitar Foundation mm -hmm. of America, but uh, eventually we pulled that down too. And uh, somewhere along the line, we. What, I don't know, 10 or 12 years later, we got thinking, geez, we ought to do this again. Or maybe we shouldn't. Well, maybe we should. You know, it kind of hemmed and hawed. And then uh, we sort of got inspired by the Guitar League over in Syracuse to, yeah. to maybe consider uh, putting a group together again. So, I don't know, here we are. We, we, we're going to maybe hook up with them, but we decided to go with a slightly different program. And well, I know that you guys here we are. do a real nice, uh, when you do your meetings. What we do is... Uh, Meetings are once a month. Uh, lately, we've had meetings twice a month. Um, let's see, uh, the first Sunday of the month, we get together and play. And then the third Monday of the month, depending on which month it is, we're going to get together and play. Or if it's the alternate month, we'll have somebody come in and do a presentation. We'll do a presentation. Yeah. yeah. But you also sponsor groups to play at different concerts. Concerts. Yeah, we have some concerts. Yeah. Try to do three or four a year. Right. Kind of depends. Sometimes uh, someone will come in out of town and and they want to do a concert, and uh, we're not really f ready to roll them into the normal concert schedule. But mm. it really doesn't take much to put on a concert. And yeah. sometimes yeah, we'll do one in conjunction with another um, with someone else. Like we did one with Nazareth College. You asked me to hold this up, so yeah, I will. I think put the camera, camera can get it. Uh, Mike, you're gonna have to zoom in there, and we can't see over here what you're Which zooming in on. Which camera shall I point so. to? Anyway. Uh, so this is a group called Tantalus. Uh, I forget where they're from, but they were going to be doing something in town. And Peter Kozis from Eastman called us up and said, hey, you want to co-sponsor this? So we did. It worked out great. You got some others there? Yeah. Um, well, let's see. We've got, um, well, we were talking about presentations a while ago. Uh, basically, every other month, someone will come in and do a presentation. So after uh, about eight months, you got four people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we'll call them back and ask them to do a concert. So uh, here's a couple of the concerts we've done. Um, I was on this one, so you'll see my Might hold that little bit smiling flatter. face in there. Flatter? Yeah, there we go. How's that? Uh, I forget who's on there. Steve Green, a local jazz teacher. Mm -hmm. Fred Vine, who's a blues guy. And uh, uh, Kimo Knox, who's a teacher over at the University of Rochester. And he and his wife go over to... Hawaii uh, every summer and study Hawaiian culture. He's become quite an avid uh, fan of Hawaiian guitar playing, so he did something. And uh, what else do we got here? Deb Fox, she was our first presenter uh, back in 2006, and uh, she did something on the lute and the theorbo. And uh, who else do we have? Peter Kojis came and did uh, classical guitar. Mira Lee came over from Buffalo and did something on flamenco. And Jerry Preston was um, a specialist in uh, the tapping thing that Mark, that Mark uh, yeah, did, today, did a little yeah. bit earlier. So we try to hit on as many different styles as we can and uh, try to embrace all the different ways that people play the guitar. Mostly acoustic guitar, and uh, I guess you'd call it fingerstyle guitar, but that's, you know, we try to do as much as we can. Well, you're very, um, you're, you're educating other guitar players and uh, you're entertaining the public yeah. and uh, it seems like a very a close knit group I mean everybody <laughs> seems to get along real well together at least this group does mm -hmm. and uh, and it seems like a lot of fun and I know that uh, Uncle Nick uh, you just uh, got involved with them too didn't you? 
Well, I became a member, yes. Yes, um, right. Well, you just played today. What was the concert, um, the last concert at the Harmony House? Who was there? Lauren? Yeah. Uh, you played? Or did... Uh, John Williamson play. George Colicchio. <laughs> George, yeah. George, 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 George Colicchio. Yeah, Lord George Colicchio. And then we had... All two um, classical guitars. Who were they? Oh, uh, it'll come to me in a minute. Tim... Shannon. Tim Shannon, Tim Shannon yeah. and a, a guy that he works with. Yeah, that was it. It's nice. Those are uh, really uh, uh, enjoyable. I, I like that sort of format where you have four people each playing a set. And, yeah, uh, and it was uh, kind of mixed up. We had George Colicchio <coughs> playing a sort of a jazz thing, and uh, Tim Shannon and uh, Dennis Pino. Dennis. Yeah. Yeah. And they did classical and, and some, um, Irish. some South American things yeah. and some Celtic music. Well, that's one thing that strikes me about the Rochester Guitar Club is that you have such a variety of, you know, styles. Just yeah. on this show alone, uh, we've had uh, a variety of styles even. That's right. Membership is uh, yeah. voluntary. If you want, you can uh, buy a membership or if you want, you can just be on the mailing list. Well, that's what's nice about the club is that it, it makes it pretty affordable for everybody to anybody who wants to join. What, what is your website? Uh, do you have the website? RochesterGuitarClub.com. Is there any email or phone number of contact? Or anything like no that? phone number. Just you can email. actually sign up for the mailing list at the website. Right. Yeah. Okay. The big feature of the website it really is the calendar page. Mm -hmm. We yeah. try to keep um, track of as many guitar-related events. Uh, going on in Rochester and within a hundred miles if it makes no, sense to put it on there uh, we'll do that and there's a great um, articles on past presentations and then there's a resource page yeah. so yeah. so you should try to get on that website and catch it and see what you can learn from it well we hope you enjoyed the show and the roundtable and we will continue this roundtable on our next show part two of the Rochester Guitar Club and now, to finish up for tonight, we have Deb Ross. Okay, now we have for you a special person. Do you want to give us your full name and whereabouts you live, the area you live? Rochester, I assume? Nope, Canandaigua. Oh. And my oh. name is Deb, short for Deborah Ross, and I live in Canandaigua. I've lived there for about 20 years, and I've lived in a bunch of other places before that. Did you, did you, uh, how long have you been playing guitar for a long time? Uh, yeah, actually, I got started uh, back when I was in high school, and back then it was folk, you know, people mm -hmm. like Joan Baez, and mm. I had the wrong hair, so <laughs> I, I, I quit being a folk singer. Quit, quit the folk singing this stuff. What kind of music you do now? Well, these last couple of years I've been studying classical music, which I find a real challenge, and... Um, but I'm learning a lot from it. And how in the world did you get with this Rochester Guitar Club? I mean, how did you find them? You look at the Yellow Pages? or No, I heard about them at a club that I used to belong to, and I decided I liked this one better. Well, the, the, it, this is a great club, and it's so nice to have a, a nice lady in the club, too. I know there aren't as many ladies in the club as there are men, but uh, it, I hear it's growing. Uh, the last thing I heard, so thank you. <laughs> but uh, I look forward to listening to your classical music. Uh, again, a lot of uh, versatility tonight, and uh, now we have some nice classical. So do you want to give us the name of the song? Yeah, the piece is In Sorrow's Wake, and it's by Andrew York. Okay, thank you.